This is why you should never step foot on the faraway dock. In 1994, an 11-year-old named Mark arrived at summer camp and made his way over to the dining hall where the director was going to talk about the next couple of weeks. The director emphasized that no one was allowed to swim out to the dock located way out in the middle of the lake, although she didn't say why. Mark and the three other boys in his cabin were so intrigued by this faraway dock that the next day during lunch while everyone was eating, they hopped in the lake and started swimming out. When they finally got out to the dock, they were a little bit let down because it looked like any other dock. But they decide to make the best of it, they climb on top, and they start playing the game where they all stand on one side until it floods, last one to fall off, wins. As the corner sank, they started to hear a scratching sound coming from underneath the dock. Suddenly, hundreds of these big meaty spiders come crawling out through the breaks in the wood and slide down the slanted dock towards the boys who panic and fall forward, and there's spiders swarming their hair and their face. Turns out, the dock was off limits because it was overrun with dock spiders, and the boys flooded their nest. This is why you should never eat a cult's applesauce. During his stay in a psych ward in the 1970s, Marshall Applewhite formed an intense, non-romantic relationship with his nurse, Bonnie Nettles. They quickly realized aliens had preordained their encounter, and now they needed to board their spacecraft once the aliens came back to Earth to give them the signal. The pair formed a cult called Heaven's Gate, and they recruited people by telling them if they missed this one UFO ride, they would be destroyed when the Earth was inevitably recycled. Their cult was considered a joke and not a threat until they did something so horrific it shocked the world. On March 26, 1997, the aliens were going to be passing overhead hiding behind a comet and it was now time for the members to hop on board. Over the course of three days, members donned matching Nike sneakers, ate poisoned applesauce, tied bags over their head, and then waited to exit the Earth. Right before they died, they conducted exit interviews, and they are truly disturbing. To see these interviews and learn more about the Cult of Cults, check out Heaven's Gate on HBO Max. Link is in my bio. This is why you should always breathe through your nose. In 2009, a Russian man named Artyom Sidorkin started experiencing intense chest pains to the point where he couldn't even stand up. He tried to ignore it, but when he started coughing up blood, he went to the emergency room. They gave him an x-ray, and it revealed a fist-sized tumor growing in his lung. Afterwards, the doctor told Mr. Sidorkin, unfortunately, it looks like cancer. But before they could start removing large chunks of his lung, the doctor needed to do a biopsy to see if it really was cancer. So a terrified Mr. Sidorkin came in a few days later, they performed the biopsy, and the surgeon, as he was looking at the tissue, noticed something. Tucked in the middle of the tissue was a five centimeter long fir tree. Mr. Sidorkin was a botanist, and he was a big mouth breather, and at some point while he was working, he managed to inhale a fir tree seed. When the doctors told him he didn't have cancer, he had a tree, he was shocked, and he said, I had no sense that a tree was growing in my lungs. But more than shocked, he was just happy to be cancer-free. This is why you should always change your locks. In 2017, a college girl woke up from a nightmare drenched in sweat and decided to rinse off before going back to sleep. She propped her phone on a shelf, turned on some music, and then hopped in the shower. A few minutes later, she reaches for her phone to change the song, but stops suddenly. Reflected on her phone's screen was a person standing in the middle of her bathroom facing the shower. She somehow kept her composure, turned the water to scalding hot, and then ripped open the curtain and sprayed the intruder in the face. As they howled in pain, she ran past them to her kitchen to get her butcher's knife. In a panic, she can't find her knife, so she just runs out of the apartment and calls the police. The police go in and come out with a crazy looking woman in handcuffs. One of the officers comes over to the girl and says, she used to live here and she had copies of your keys. Then he pauses and looks down and brings up a clear evidence bag that contained her butcher's knife. And he says, looks like she wanted her apartment back. This is why you should always keep your head on a swivel. In 2017, an elderly woman who lived alone thought she saw something moving in her backyard and went to the window to have a look. As she's looking around, a shadowy figure emerges right on the other side of the glass standing in her backyard. Terrified, she keeps an eye on the figure while calling police, but by the time she hangs up, the figure's gone. When the police arrive, her front door is unlocked, so they go inside and they find her still sitting in front of the window looking for this figure. The police search the backyard, but they don't find anything. When the police go back inside to search the house, they quickly find some large footprints that couldn't have been hers in the room that she was sitting in and all around the first floor. That's when they realized what was going on. She wasn't seeing a shadowy figure in her backyard. She was seeing the reflection of someone in the room with her. This is what they meant when they said, don't talk to strangers. In the early 1900s, a 10 year old boy was playing in the woods when a tall man appeared and asked if he wanted to come back to his cabin for dinner. Totally caught off guard, the boy reluctantly agrees and begins walking. 
When they get to the cabin, the boy is relieved when he sees Paul, a family friend, sitting on the porch, so the boy happily goes inside. After they eat, the boy says thank you to the strange tall man, says bye to Paul, and then he leaves. He had only walked a few steps when he sees his family, along with Paul, running up the path towards him, frantically asking if he was okay. Confused, the boy says, I'm just fine, and he looks at Paul and he's like, why didn't you tell them I was with you at, at the cabin? And he points over his shoulder. Paul glances over the boy's shoulder and then narrows his eyes and says, you were kidnapped by a cult three days ago. No one's seen you. Terrified, the boy turns around to look at the cabin he just came from, and it's gone. All he sees is a dark forest that stretches for miles. This is why you should always trust your parents. In 1990, a father and his 15-year-old son worked together at a gas station in Florida. One night, the boy was sitting outside on a break when he saw a crazy-looking woman walking towards the store. They were in a high-crime area, and it was very late, so the boy turns around to look through the glass at his dad to see what he should do. His dad took one look at the woman and just shook his head, no, do not help her. The woman walks up to the boy and says, hey, my car's broken down, can you give me a ride? Before the boy can answer, his dad bursts outside and says, you need to leave here immediately. Angrily, the woman turns and leaves, cussing them both out the whole way. One year later, the boy's in his room at home when his dad calls from the other room and says, you gotta come in here and look at the TV. On the screen was the same woman from the gas station. Better known as Eileen Warnos, she was a serial killer who used to pick up her male victims at gas stations in Florida. She was later put to death. This is why you never go to the well on your own. In 1983, a young boy was camping with his family on Roan Mountain in North Carolina when his mom asked him to head on down the path and get some water from the well. When the boy didn't return, his mom went to check on him and he was gone. A massive search party was launched to find him, but with temperatures rapidly dropping and finding no trace of him, the family braced for the worst. Then, miraculously, on the seventh day of the search, the boy shows up on the mountaintop in an area they had already searched, healthy and clean. When they asked the boy, where have you been? He said he had been at the well when a tall, faceless man showed up behind him, scooped him up and brought him to the top of the mountain where he kept him in his cabin all week. After the boy gave a very detailed description of exactly where this cabin was on the mountain, the police were eager to go find it and confront this guy. But the park superintendent just raised his hand and said, guys, it's pointless. I've worked here 40 years. There are no cabins on Roan Mountain. This is why you should never explore abandoned ships. In 2014, the US Navy decided to decommission one of its oldest ships, so it brought it into port to be broken down for scrap. Before workers were allowed to actually start breaking it down, the foreman had to go on board and take pictures of every room. So late one night, the foreman spends about an hour walking through this abandoned ship with a flashlight, taking about 100 pictures. When he was done, he emailed the pictures to his boss, who quickly wrote back, Who's the guy with the axe? The foreman had no idea what he was talking about, but he noticed the boss had attached one of the pictures that he had just sent him. When he opened it, he nearly fainted. There, in the bowels of the ship, poking his head around a corner, was a faceless man wielding an axe. The foreman had spent over an hour in this hallway and never heard or saw this guy. The Navy searched the ship and never found this guy. They also reviewed security footage of the only entrance, and he never entered or left the ship. This is why you should never spend the night on Niku Mororo Island. In 1937, while on her flight around the world, Amelia Earhart mysteriously vanished over Howland Island in the Pacific Ocean. Despite an enormous search, she was never found. Three years after her disappearance, a scientist discovered an incomplete skeleton on this tiny, uninhabited island called Niku Mororo Island that wasn't too far from Howland Island. It looked like whoever's bones these were, they had been ripped limb from limb. But when the bones were examined, they determined they were not Amelia Earhart's. But in 2017, a forensic anthropologist re-examined the bones and determined they were almost definitely Amelia's. So scientists went to Niku Mororo Island and they found freckle cream, something Amelia was famous for using. So the working theory is she crash landed on Niku Mororo Island and she fell asleep somewhere on the beach. Then, after smelling her blood, hundreds of three foot wide coconut crabs came out of their burrows, swarmed her, and ate her. 